Hey there YouTube, I'm Yukitsu, this is the Yukitsu Times, welcome to my channel. Once again, we're playing a little bit more Shogun 2 Total War. Going to be playing uh, Allow Mixed Avatars once again. Hopefully we're going to be getting better opponents than last time, because uh, last week was a little bit mixed in terms of uh, what we were getting. And frankly, I don't want a repeat of that, but I am trying to show every single match that I play where possible. Um, and so, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Looks like we got an opponent here. Let's see who it is. Either that or this is just lagging out a little bit for God knows what reason. Um, hmm. Yeah, no, sometimes that searching for players thing stops spinning just before you get an opponent, so hopefully that's the case. If not, then I will do a cut to when I finally do get an opponent, or I'll get one right now. Uh, we've got a rank 7 bronze. He's a follow the samurai champion, so let's see what he's up about. All about. Uh, he favors a balanced army, so I'm gonna get rid of these guns because they're going to be pretty useless. He's a polite guy, that's good. Uh, let's modify what we got here though. As you can see, I'm taking these Great Guard cavalry, very powerful, very heavy charge, but also I want to up the number of spear units that I've got here. Uh, I need a specific type of spear unit though. I want to be able to screen with them. So I'm using these Naginata attendants instead of the heavier uh, spear uh, Yariashigaru, uh, who are a little bit more costly. And let's get another sword unit in there. Actually, no, that's too expensive, I think. Let's get um, another of these guys, another of these guys, and let's bring back that Yari unit. Oops, those guys are not Yaris. Uh, once again, Worried about my opponent if he takes a lot of cavalry. Uh, the Great Guard will be an excellent addition against them. They're a little bit slower, which is why I've taken this Livestock Pestilence, but they're backed up by these veteran Yari cavalry, which are also very fast, so they make a good complement to one another. The Great Guard are capable of bashing straight through units by themselves, and uh, the Yari cavalry are more mobile and they can chase down gun cavalry if they have to, while the Great Guard cavalry guards them against Yari Ki. Working together, I should be able to take out whatever Cavi has. Um, the one unit that I have to worry about using the composition that I have is Shogitai, since I don't have as many good sword units as I'd necessarily like to. I don't have any bow units, so I can't really charge in against a gun line backed by Shogitai as, as I would normally want to. And of course, I have no gun, so if he goes full rush, I can't defend against that properly either. So, there's a couple weaknesses in the style of army that I've brought. Hopefully, I'll be able to pull through anyhow. We're on Chubu Pass, which is a pretty open map, honestly. Cavalry do pretty well here. Uh, I can hide a little bit in the forest and then sneak it up, but honestly, it's not going to be too good uh, hiding all my cavalry in this particular matchup. Now, Fall of the Samurai armies are a little bit different than standard ones. One of the biggest and most important features of Fall of the Samurai army is that high-ranking leadership-style generals can take... Um, Essentially, they can see where I deploy without having to uh, actually take the retainer that lets you do that. Normally, you'd need the ninja informer or something like that uh, to see what I've actually taken. Uh, he can just see what I've taken, potentially, if he's taking that leadership feat. Uh, and that is a very strong ability. I happen to like it myself. So that means that my opponent probably knows what I'm deploying and how I'm deploying it. Um, and that makes it very difficult to tell uh, what your opponent knows and what they don't know. In any event, I'm going to use my Great Guard actually as guard for now. Uh, I've got my other two units hidden just in case my opponent is not in fact a uh, leadership style general. I'm not sure why they don't give you that information when you're uh, playing, but the most common is actually the gunner general. Uh, he gives good army-wide bonuses. Let's see what my opponent's got. He's got Bandit Horse Thieves, and he's got Muzzle Load and Carbine, which doesn't do anything to me since I don't have modern guns, obviously. But, yeah, you can just look at the uh, stats for my Great Guard. They're huge melee attack. Um, morale, melee defense is also actually pretty good for a Spear Cavalry. They've got a charge bonus to 35, uh, reduced to 30 because of my opponent, and their bonus versus Cav is 15. So they're a very good unit all around. I, I really like using those guys. Uh, so if we look at dojos, I've got the uh, archery one on my side, which is good and bad. The reason it's good is that if my opponent had artillery, he could camp on that forever and just rain shells on my army for an, an indefinite period. 
Uh, on the other hand, I kind of do also want the Sword Dojo. He's denying me the one I want as well. Um, but the shrine right in the center is what we're probably going to be fighting over. Anyway, let's get this one started. See what my opponent's got. Now, uh, I won't be able to tell immediately if my opponent has a leadership style general necessarily. Uh, the best I can do really is look at his general's unit and see if it looks like he has a gun. And, uh, okay, this does look like a modern general, so I suspect that he does not know what I've taken. He's taken mostly a large gun line backed by a couple Yariki. Uh, looks like he's going to rush ahead a little bit. Now, the beautiful thing about Great Guard Cavalry is that these two cavalry units will beat those three Yariki. Hands down, no problem. It'll be a massacre if he tries to do anything about that. Um, but... On the other hand, I do need to get these guys forward a little bit because I need to cover my uh, Wacko Raiders. Now, my guys are going to get uh, discovered pretty soon, I think. I think I'm just outside of his discovery range, but he must know something is up because uh, of this capture here. So, because my opponent is so gun-heavy, I'm going to actually spread my units out into, a, into this... Uh, spread out formation. I'm not sure if my opponent has brought uh, hidden units, but he may have. And uh, looks like I've actually blundered into gun range, so I'm going to have to start charging here. Uh, charging from this angle is going to put me at a disadvantage, but uh, hopefully we'll make it in. And uh, we're going to just charge on this one side for now and see if my opponent reacts. Oh shit. So we're gonna charge around here from behind as well. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna get in. Our screening unit's down, but that's fine. Gonna get a good charge off against this Black Bear Infantry from the flank here, and uh, then back our cavalry back out. Yuri and Ashigaru are gonna get into there. They're not the most effective, but uh, they'll do the trick. Let's do that. And let's get this unit. Another unit back around there. Shit. Was not paying enough attention, so I lost a whole ton of uh, guard for no good reason. Let's go get these guys up here, though. Looks like we're going to punch through here. Got katanas and cavalry into his units from uh, all sorts of angles. my great guard. I'm gonna need to pull my great guard in here. Now my calves gotten shredded pretty badly but we're doing pretty well here. This is pretty fast-paced battle. I'm gonna want to just cover for uh, my units here. Pop a rally, get my general out of here a little bit. Get my great guard up. Okay, my great guard covered for that. Uh, they're going to be able to tie them down. So, as you can see, it just shattered straight through that unit of cav. Uh, like his unit of cav can't even come close to matching my general or my uh, great guard. Oh shit! General under fire. Uh, he's trying to kite back with that one unit, but he's doing it with one unit, which is not going to work obviously. Uh, just want one great guard unit doing that. Other one gonna get in here and this is going to be my opponent's army. Uh, as you can see a lot of fast movement from my forces. Uh, I'm 
opponents seeing a GG well played, which is pretty rare in this game, honestly. Even I don't do it, but, uh, it, you know, it's very polite. I probably should do it more often. But as you can see, what my strategy there was, use my fast elements to really sort of hammer him. Uh, he had to draw his cavalry from one side to the other, which let me use my great guard as a big hammer blow. And he can't block them with just one unit of uh, Yari Ki. Uh, as I said, those great guard can wipe out three units of Yari Ki by themselves uh, pretty easily, in fact. That one charge basically just instantly shattered one of his Yari Ki units. And uh, just eating some Cheetos while I'm doing this. New jalapeno flavored. I don't even know why I bought these, they're on sale. But uh, yeah, that's how you sort of use a heavier cavalry army that's not necessarily a lot of cavalry, but very high quality cavalry. You need to move very quickly. And since my opponent had that shooting advantage, I couldn't afford to stand still. I had to charge forward into his guns. That's just how it is. Now, my opponent very intelligently um, had his units arrayed so that when his first row of units got engaged, he had a unit, uh, second set of units behind them so that he could keep peeling back. But that's why I had my cavalry around the back on that one side. That way I could sort of overwhelm that group and prevent them from moving backwards. And that's exactly sort of what happened. So we've captured the province of Hizen. That'll be, uh, yep, Matchlock Samurai, new unit. Uh, I'll use them sometimes, but I prefer Matchlock Ashigaru, generally. And uh, another Yari Ashigaru. I, I was kind of hoping for a veteran great guard, but uh, can't always get them. Now let's look at our unit statistics. Uh, our Waco Raiders, powerful sword unit now with these three veterancy. They got 146 kills. It's a lot. Uh, these guys didn't even get in combat. They were my left flank reserve. Uh, I've got Katani units all over the place that were doing tons of work. I'm not sure how on earth these guys got 115 kills uh, and got 2,557 experience from that. Wow. This sword unit got completely wiped out. I'm a little bit surprised by that. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, anyway, the attendant units, they're a meat shield. They did their work pretty well. Bolt sponged up a lot of casualties before I got in there. Uh, my Yari Cavalry, one of them got wiped out, uh, but got 54 kills. It's not too bad. It's that even trade I was talking about. Other Yari uh, Cav, 33 lost, 93 um, kills. That's really good for them. And my Great Guard got 47 and 74 kills with f relatively few losses. So that's really good for them as well. For my opponent, his Black Bears, uh, they all got lots of kills. Mostly they're going to have killed my Meat Shield units though. Um, that's pretty much what they're firing at coming in. Apparently they're shooting at one of my uh, Katana Samurai as well, but it looks like it was mostly these two units that soaked up a lot of the initial casualties. And then the follow-up I think was a lot in melee and a little bit I think of my Yari Ashigar were getting that as well. Um, yeah, this unit must have been getting hammered by guns somehow. I'm not sure how that was happening. Uh, Yari Ki, they did poorly. They were heavily outmatched by my uh, Great Guard. And the rest of these black bears all did a little bit, quite a lot worse than his front row of black bears, just because uh, they had the opportunity to fire, whereas these second group didn't. So that's going to be our first match. Let's move on to round two. And we're back. As you can see, we've got a four-star silver general here. Let's see what he's all about. He's an old timey army. He favors a balanced army, and his general is a skilled swordsman. So that means his general can defeat an awful lot of my guys in melee combat. As you can see, we've sort of gone for a little bit of an all-of-everything army. We've got two swords, two Naginata, two of our veteran Yari Ashigaru. And we did end up taking this match like Ashigaru just because I wanted to take him for a spin. A bit of Bokav and then an eclectic mix of other cavalry. And I figure that this army is going to be a decent one. Um, it's got a lot of uh, bases that can cover. I'm going to have to change my retainers, of course, because I, I don't need the Shogun's Emissary, obviously. Uh, I don't want my opponent to be able to just outsword me. That would be um, bad given my composition. So I'm going to take the untrained Fugu Cook. I want to be able to capture his cavalry since my cavalry is not necessarily the fastest. And I, I want to keep my bow cavalry a bit safe. So the Livestock Pestilence is good. The Practice Grounds are also good. So what's the difference mostly between 
um, Matchlock Ashigaru and the Matchlock Samurai. Well, the Matchlock Samurai is a more expensive unit, obviously. For that, they get armor. The reason that armor is useful on Matchlock units is that uh, they tend to be weak against bows, Matchlock units. Bows outrange them by that little bit. They've got much faster rate of fire, and they can fire sort of from terrain that they can sort of back away from the Matchlocks when the Matchlocks look like they're going to get a good firing arc. So bows are a good counter to Matchlocks in general. Um, Matchlock Samurai have slight resistance to that, thanks to that armor. And this lets them be played a little bit more aggressively. You can push them forward to try and shoot at bows if the, your opponent is obliging to that. And this lets you kind of play them against an army that is heavily bow reliant a little bit more effectively. They're also a little bit more resilient in melee, and what this means is that if your opponent's taking light cavalry, if they charge straight in, you can get a little bit of an advantage uh, in that exchange. You're still probably not going to want to let that happen, but if it does happen, they're going to be a lot more effective than if they didn't. My opponent's got Livestock Pestilence and Damp Powder, which means that my matchlocks are going to be firing dirt slow. So he picked a good counter response to something that I have, but uh, fortunately it's not the main component of my army. My main component is going to be this mixed assault that I'm going to be... Actually, I want uh, my Nagnata in the center, and I want the swords on the side, so... Okay, now I'm going to have my bows guarded by these guys, so that'll be group two. These guys will be uh, my general bodyguard, and I'm going to have my Ashigaru kind of uh, in a second tier defense back here. And they're going to be able to push forward or take objectives as necessary. So this is going to be our group one, slightly different formation. I don't have as many bows as I would like, given that my opponent took Damp Powder. Now, Damp Powder means one of two things. My opponent's going to be Skirmish Heavy, or he's going to have a Melee Rush Army. And uh, a Melee Rush Army is what it looks like he's probably got, but uh, I'll save that judgment until I've taken a closer look at his army. It looks like I'll be able to capture the Sword Dojo no problem. Uh, let's take a look at what he's got. Looks like he's got um, all hero units. Right. Well, if I set up my guns properly, if I charge him uh, with my units into with my cavalry units, I can cause a good amount of damage. But uh, yeah, this is very different. I'm just gonna get to shooting against them with my um, bow cav. Doesn't look like he's got any response against that. Uh, as far as I remember, the softest unit he's got are the Naginata Warrior Monk heroes. Now. Uh, he's obviously gotten a hidden unit on that island there, and that's going to be either... Oh, those are Hanzo Shadows, so they're a sword unit. If I get a good charge off against them, should be able to do some damage. Looks like he's charging his general, which is a four-star bronze, or silver, I mean, uh, against my bows. This is a terrible idea. Uh, he doesn't want to be doing what he's doing here because, like a, like you can see, I can capture him on my much faster Yari Cavalry. Shred up his general, even though he's a melee gen. Uh, he doesn't have enough ranks to have the immunity to spears ability, so he's getting torn up here. And I might lose this uh, unit of Naginatas, or sorry, these uh, Yaris, this cavalry, but his general's dead, so... You know. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to capture the sword dojo. He's going to capture the uh, armor. I'm just going to stand here to deny that a little bit, but he's already got it, so it doesn't make a big difference. Um, I'm going to start shooting at these Hands of Shadows, though, and for that I'm going to need vision. Uh, Hands of Shadows are this ridiculously good ninja... Uh, sword unit and uh, they can do a lot of damage looks like the game's frozen my opponent might have disconnected uh, not really sure what's going on but as you can see I'm just gonna pick up these guys with my arrows let's zoom in on them got these funny little fans over their head they're a hero unit so these arrows aren't gonna kill them even this one guy which has, uh, as you can see, artistically decided to have the arrow freeze frame directly uh, 
as it's heading towards his face. I think that's heading towards his face anyway. Um, uh, maybe not. Okay, well we've got the victory music. After that, that means my opponent dropped. Not really sure what that was. That was very peculiar. I do apologize I'm eating while well doing this, but, um, well, I'm hungry, so that's the way it is. I should probably actually just stop and eat dinner like a normal person would, but, hmm, you know. I told myself that I wanted to get these done first before I, I ate dinner, and that's what I'm going to do, so. Alright, so we've won that battle. Got a good number of experience. We're almost at five and a half. That'll be nice. Bungo, we got a useless retainer. Oh, sorry, no, this is the Matchlock Warrior Monk one. Uh, the next one's the useless retainer. Uh, Matchlock Warrior Monk's very good unit. No, they're the opposite of the Matchlock Samurai. They're even more fragile, I think, than Matchlock Ashigaru in terms of their armor, which means that they're very, very susceptible to bows. But on the other hand, they've got amazing statistics for shooting, and they've got a special ability uh, that extends their range out to 125 that makes them a little bit more viable against archers, and it lets you set up just outside of range of your opponent's Matchlocks, if that's what they've taken, and uh, fire your shots further away than they can retaliate from. So... Huge advantages. Um, probably going to get the... Um, now let's get the Yari Master rather than the Katana Hero. I don't really particularly like Katana Hero, but we're working our way to Satsuma, which we'll do on our next episode, uh, and get the Neganata Warrior Monks. After that, you can do some really funny things with your army composition that are really strong. Now that unit got kind of torn up, so I'm just going to replace it, and I will uh, see you back when we've got another opponent. And we're back against the exact same guys last time. Well, let's see how he reacts to this. My money is he's going to try and completely throw me for a loop by doing something absolutely different from what he did last time. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit different from what I did last time. I'm going to take out those two units going to modify my army, go in here, and uh, add in my Daikyu Samurai. I'm going to replace these guys with another unit of Yari Cavalry, save a little bit of money. Uh, and let's get rid of one of these for a little bit more archery firepower. Actually, hmm, not entirely sure what I want to do for archery here, uh, for range firepower, but... That ought to do. Uh, now, the reason I'm doing this is that Hida Mountains is a pretty good map for archery. It's also a good map for guns, though. I'm wondering if I want to sacrifice much more mobility than I have already. Uh, it's a pretty good map for cavalry as well, though, is the problem. Um, I can probably get rid of a sword unit, but that's really risky. So, going with what we've got might be what we're going to have to do. Or I could just use the Daikyu by themselves and uh, rely on these matchlocks. Let's go with that. Now, not really sure that this is the ideal range setup, but honestly, uh, until I've got the Bow Warrior Monks, this is pretty much what I'm going to be able to do. And this way, if my opponent decides to calf spam, um, he is going to be in a lot of trouble. If he goes for that all-hero approach again, he'll be in a lot of trouble. So thing about Hida Mountains is that if he does want to, he can sort of hide around behind these trees and uh, my guns won't be able to do anything. So, as you can see, big open fields though. Um, I thought there was a hill somewhere in this map, but I guess not really. Um, maybe it's just on the left there and that's just uh, harder to tell by looking at it on this map. Now, the main capture points are on both the sides and in the middle. It's a little bit tricky to actually capture everything just because it's so wide. But if necessary, I can capture one of them and try and fight from a, a side. And that's if he's taking a full melee rush army. I don't want to try and capture at the middle or meet him at the middle. That would just be suicidal. 
Well, let's see what this guy's brought. He's brought the same retainers. Uh, and I knew that he was probably going to take the powder one again, but I mean, there's only much, so much I can do against a person who does that sort of thing, so. Um, and he's probably taking it to cover up his weakness. You know, if his weakness is, in fact, that he's taking those expensive hero units, um, guns are very strong against them, so he can't really afford to let me have high-quality guns. So it makes sense to take a retainer that nerfs them, much like how I can't afford to be attacked by high-quality sword units, so I have the untrained Fugu Cook. Or you can use it to multiply an advantage that you already have. So... Okay, I've got all my cav hidden. I'm going to keep them in a separate wing. I'm going to keep my swords along either side here again. Uh, I'm probably going to have to use spear wall in the center and hope that these Yari Ashigaru are veteran enough to hold through, but I suspect they won't. So these guys are going to have to be ready to move into the center to reinforce. My general's right dead center, and that'll help protect them a little bit and keep their morale high. So let's get this started. I've started to the left because I can't contest the one on the right if my opponent decides to rush forward. What I can do on this side is move obliquely to this hill and uh, get a good firing angle on him so that he can't charge me in a rush. So that's why I've chosen this side over the right side. Uh, the sword dojo is probably a little bit better all in all than the workshop, but the workshop is what I'm going to have to deal with for this particular strategy because my army is definitely heavy on the skirmishy uh, skirmishy side. So my opponent's taken a much more balanced army this time, but uh, he's taken bow samurai and uh, yeah, two bow samurai, he's named them bow heroes for some reason. Uh, looks like matchlock warrior monks up here. Only three stars so I don't have to worry too much about them. He's got no dachis uh, and some ashigaru. Uh, nothing too, too scary. He's got Naganata Warrior Monks on one flank, though, which is pretty scary. So my opponent hasn't taken a full-on rush army or anything like that, um, but he has got some scary units uh, that can definitely lay out the pain on me. I'm going to try and get into a good position to both contest the workshop and uh, get a good firing angle on this, uh, whatever you call it, the farmhouse. I always get the names of these wrong. But basically, uh, his bow samurai are going to be a very good unit against me. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to properly maneuver against him, but let's see how things go. Uh, normally, I like to have a much heavier melee component, but let's get this started. I want to get rid of these matchlock, uh, matchlock warrior monks mostly, so we're going to work on that first. As you can see, I've got huge range with those Daikyu Samurai, uh, and they're just going to pick apart whatever units he has from as far as possible. He's using his extended range ability. Uh, I'm going to rush up and use my own match locks against him as best I can, but he's definitely going to have the advantage in that fight, just flat out, and there's no way I can uh, make up for that. He has left the wrong units alone, however. And as you can see, uh, my guns have gotten good shots off. Great shots off, in fact. I'm going to back off with these units. I'm going to put these guys back into condensed formation. Here you can see, though, gotten off a lot of uh, damage to his units before he's even gotten close. Uh, I've been whistling arrowed with my samurai, so they're moving very slowly. Uh, let's get these units into... Spear wall. Get these guys ready to go up. Get my cavalry over here ready. I'm gonna get a good charge over here. It looks like uh, his his guys are pretty hopelessly outmatched. And it looks like I'm getting gunshots off against his uh, units as well. So his journal's forced to back off. This will let me get me into his uh, other units here. His center's broken. He's forced to rush more units in. He's got uh, this attack all bungled up here. He's got a uh, very disorganized attack. So that's good for me here. 
He's forestalled this unit in front of my guys. That's really good for me. Uh, we're going to just keep raining arrows down on him. Get my general. Need him over near this cav fight. Uh, once he gets in range, I'll be able to inspire my units a little bit. Uh, but we've got our guns standing over here. They're firing away from the side. Really good. Our katana doing okay against those nodachis. Uh, and he's charging forward into a spear wall formation. So he's not going to be able to break through very easily. I'm going to pop that on my uh, Naginata warrior monk cav. So those nodachis are eventually going to tear through those swordsmen. But uh, they already took out a couple units. And as you can see, like his front's collapsed again. I've still got good gun units, I've still got these excellent bow units, still raining down on them. My cav, now free to get a good charge off against his units. Uh, and I can now move these guys to go attack his bows in melee. Go on, Naginata. He's saying, I lost. Uh, my answer to that is probably... Uh, you never know, he might pull through. But as you can see, my strategy really worked well. Uh, I forced him to rush forward when he probably shouldn't have. His unit got absolutely trounced by a combination of my gunfire and my uh, very good Naginata cavalry. Now, Naginata cavalry, a couple weaknesses, a couple strengths. Uh, I can actually charge this Yari Ashigaru unit and they'll probably break. Yep. So, when they're wavering, even uh, spears will break against Cav. So, let's get in on his archers, and that'll be the mop-up operation. So, you can see sort of why I aimed for his guns rather than his bows. Bows do good damage over time, sort of wear down your army and can remove key targets. He could have gotten rid of probably both of my matchlock actually Garo pretty easily. Um, my opponent's probably disconnected once again, but... Uh, in this case, it's a little bit more understandable. Hold on one second, my dog wants to go outside. Sorry about that. But anyway, as you can see, sort of though, uh, to use those bow veterans like that, those expensive bow units, you need to be stuck into a long range fight for a long time. And there are ways to force that to happen. Um, but when you decide to have that bow advantage and you charge forward, you're throwing that advantage away because once your units are in melee, your bows are rel relatively ineffective. And uh, the way melee combat works, it's over so quickly that the bows aren't going to get a chance to do their work anyway. So what they need to do is sort of set up an opportunity to take out either a clear strategic target. In my case, it was his matchlock warrior monks. Once I got rid of them, I knew I could beat him in melee. The reason being that matchlocks are an excellent counter to melee, or that he would have to rush forward into my matchlocks, which is what he did. And due to the nature of his charge forward, I was able to have all of my units in a good position to fire at him and get all those kills that they did. So basically what my opponent needed to do there was really stretch that bow advantage as best he could instead of doing what he did, which was let me kind of peg away at his units that were critical without getting any of my critical units in return. Um, now, part of the reason that he couldn't was that my critical units were those cheap, numerous units. They were the Matchlock Ashigaru. And they died just as quickly as his very expensive Matchlock Warrior Monks. So he had the wrong sort of setup for that. What he needed to do was pull his guns back and get into an intense skirmishing duel, try and get rid of either my Daikus so that his guns could do their work, or get rid of my guns so that he'd have that advantage. And uh, that's not what he did. So... Got a veteran matchlock samurai unit. I don't really like them, but I'll take it anyway, just because they're hard to get, I usually find. Um, so looking at our unit statistics, as you can see, we got a ton of kills on this uh, Katana Sam, but they all died almost. Uh, the other one, this one's the one that got hit by the Nodashis, by the way. The other ones, they got a decent number of kills, respectable number of kills, and virtually no deaths. Naginata Samurai, they were behind the spear wall, so they didn't get much of a chance to fight, but a couple of guys that trickled through got killed by them. Um, as, and as you can see, this is the effect that Spearwall has. Uh, not sure how this one got so wrecked. I think they were getting shot by arrows, though. Um, Spearwall is very weak against arrows. In any event, though, like 116 kills on a Yari Ashigaru unit is very strong. Our Matchlock Samurai, 100 kills. 
uh, 13 deaths. So that's the difference between his positioning and mine. I uh, got 63 on another match like Ashigaru and 38 on another match like Ashigaru. Daikyu Samurai did a very good job, 78, uh, 71 kills, and my cavalry did that sort of even trade that I always talk about. And when you take cavalry, always expect this. This is what you take cavalry for. Um, you can definitely do better with cavalry than I'm doing, and sometimes you'll have games where you'll have a cavalry unit getting 130 kills, but if your opponent has one-for-one one Yaris, like my opponent has, he's got pretty much one-for-one one cavalry units because his general is a cavalry unit with all those uh, melee upgrades. You can expect even trades. So that's what they're going to end up doing. They just cancel each other out. And you can get a little bit of an advantage, but it's usually going to amount to an extra, like, say, 10, 20 kills, or they get to run down a fleeing unit. So, as you can see, though, his bow samurai, they did fairly poorly. They got 22 and 61 kills. 61 kills actually is pretty good. That's pretty decent. But, uh, like, he really could have stretched that and gotten way more kills with these two units if he had let them sit back and fire for a lot longer. His matchlock warrior monk heroes, or sorry, matchlock warrior monks, uh, he names these things deceptively, uh, got basically completely trashed and didn't get very many kills. And that's because I was aiming at them as a target of uh, opportunity. His Naginata Warrior Monks, uh, similarly, mostly got killed off, but that's because they were sort of a reserve against my cavalry. His two Nodachis, they did fairly well, actually. Uh, those devastating charges uh, were a very powerful unit, uh, very powerful tool. Actually, I think that must have been what hit the um, Yaris that got de uh, destroyed here. Uh, they probably got charged by a Nodachi Samurai, but... In any event, his Yari Ashigaru weren't in Spear Wall. They were probably used to counter cavalry, but they got completely wrecked. And his two Lone Swords. Lone Swords, you need to take them for a very specific purpose and a specific army composition, and he didn't do that. So they really got torn up and uh, didn't do much. So basically the way you want to sort of look at this fight is that my opponent was kind of going in for this with the mindset that he was going to be able to outshoot me. Uh, but then he didn't do it, and he could have. Uh, it was just that matter of taking that opportunity and actually going through with it. Um, but instead he panicked and he charged forward because he saw that I was taking that uh, attack of opportunity against a very vulnerable, very high-value unit. Um, and what he needed to do instead of charging everything forward, I think, is just to move back as fast as possible with those uh, match locks and try and preserve whatever he could have from that. And... Instead, he charged all his melee forward into my guns, which let me completely take him out piecemeal. Uh, my recommendation for that is, like, don't panic. Don't panic. Keep a calm head when you're playing this game, and you'll do a lot better. Anyway, that's going to be our last match for today. I hope you found this informative, and I hope to see you all next time.